Hello everybody, my name is Notepad Anon, and I write games for fun, but we're not writing a game today, we are instead compiling one. Welcome to Emoclore! Last time on Dragon Ball Z, otherwise known as Last Tuesday, we actually managed to finish up Emoclore. We fully translated everything we na needed to, roughly, roughly speaking. Uh, and now we're going to start the compilation process. Compilation is always a little bit interesting, uh, because of what it is. Generally speaking, what compilation is at the end of the day? Is taking everything over here, I, everything over here, and moving it over here. And you'll be like, oh, 
What do you mean by that? It means taking all the Japanese stuff and getting rid of it, but also kind of like, and cleaning up some wording on things. As you can kind of see, I've already started kind of cleaning up some various wording on things to make sure that it is at least reading a little bit better, such as you create, manipulate, act, and experience as a character who gets involved in the incidents, resonates, and their emotions mutated, but and has their emotions mutated by the oddity. While the actual translation apparently was you create, manipulate, act, and experience as a party, a character who gets involved in the incident resonates and mutates their emotions. Just little things to make things a little bit easier to read. Uh, instead of having 12 footnotes, we're only currently at 8 footnotes, but um, you know how it goes. Tis the nature of things. But yeah, that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, doing doing this. It's not exactly glamorous work, but it's it, it needs to be done. Uh, also, I'd like to thank. Hello, hello, Zemfire. Oh God, why do you always make me read out these names? Uh, uh, uh I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna post this name so everybody knows that I'm like desperately trying to pronounce it. Um, Churi Churi Zebnikow Churi Churi Nikau. Nikow. Cherry Zebnikow. Like cherry, like cherry. It's like the word cherry. Zebnik. Zebnik. Ow. Zeb. Cherry Zebnik. Zebnik now. Zebnik now. The BN does not work. I refuse to believe this. Uh, thank you for following. We are at 197 followers. Good job, team. We're doing it. We are, as they say in the hood, gaming. Yes, uh,. We're just gonna go through this monstrosity uh, and try to get things going. So participants in game are divided into two roles. Player hereafter referred to as the PL. Uh, the dealer hereafter abbreviated as DL. In many other RPGs, this is known the role of the Game Master. I'm gonna keep this here because it is a little bit of a weird name. Uh, the PL creates a resonator. A resonator, let me see. We're not, I don't think we really need to under, like, I don't think we really need to uh, have people understand that they're creating the main character. Uh, creates a, uh, the PL creates a resonator, the main character of the story, and roleplay main character in the story, and we'll take, and we'll take the role, and we'll take their role, take their role in it. The DL prepares a scenario, if we scroll down here, uh, you can find Samara Disrune's soul, Build or even create your own. The scenario manages the progress of the game by explaining the situation to the PLs and other player characters. PLs and by situation to the PLs and by playing character and by playing characters other than the resonators. Other than other than the resonators. Comma uh, NPCs. If we go down to five roll fat NPC stands for non player characters. Apart from them, there's also a play with T DPCs. I'm actually going to put this actually in play. Uh, NPCs, we're going to do this. NPC stands for... NPC stands for... A uh, non-player character, first character, other than the resonators. Resonators, i.e. player characters. NPCs, otherwise known as player characters, apart from NPCs, are still played DPCs. DLs who wish to create and roleplay as their own PLs themselves as... Uh, and uh, let's see, DLs who wish to create and roleplay as players, as a player themselves, as a, as a PL themselves, creating their, uh, creating their own, creating their own resonator, uh, in which DPCs are run. The DL is like a parent who has authority to make all the decisions during setting, uh, single, during the session, during session, single, I'm gonna release that. We don't need it. Uh, during a session, uh, game decisions are made by the DL. If there's a conflict between rules and the rulebook and DL's decision, the, for example, the game decisions uh, during the game, game decisions are made by the DL. 
Uh, if there is, if there is ever a conflict between the rule between the rules and the DL, DL, the DL's decision will prevail. So that means we don't need you. Effectively, what the compilation process is, is, for lack of a better word, uh, truth be told, in lack of a better word, this is localization. Like, and that's the... Localization has been kind of a kind of a, a naughty subject in the past few years, but... <laughs> uh, taking a break from editing D&D combats episodes. Yeah, Greyhawks, Greyhawks funky. Uh, dealer deals decisions. Uh, dealers deals judgment. Oh, Wi-Fi machine localization is disgusting. And hello. Yes, hello, Jaeger. Uh, Wi-Fi machine breaking is always pain. Uh, like during the game... During the game, judgments are made by the DL. If there's ever conflict between the rules and DL, the DL DL's decision, DL the DL's DL's decisions. Yeah, like I understand. Here's the thing with localization. I understand localization in three contexts. Three, and these are really the only three. Is one. It's very obtuse wordplay. That happens a lot in Japan, Japanese, in Japan, where there is entire sections which legitimately do not make sense in English, especially if you're doing like an English language stri uh, English language script. There are moments of that like that physically do not work because you don't in English and a lot of other languages you do not have the wordplay possible in Asian languages. It's just not possible, and trying to, like, translate it raw sounds insane. It sounds legitimate crazy talk, but if you like, oh, in Japanese, this makes complete sense. I can understand for, like, situations like that, like, we need to fill in a gap here that physically does not exist, and, okay, understandable. Uh, I would also say if there is, like, a, a cultural bit, like, a cultural bit that does not make sense, or a cultural word that does not make sense in the in the context of it being like okay then maybe add in like a word that is very similar but and it establishes the context or something a lot more easily i believe there is one thing with a uh, like the word formal i believe it's it, it is like in japan there's like different versions of the word formal and but we don't have those similar wording differences so it just usually gets translated to formal because it makes complete sense to us the only other time that I really find, tr like, localization is like that. Like, I, I, the only time I kind of see it. Is when you get, you, when you get, in when you get instances like that as well. TVH, I can understand tweaking things to make it sound better as long as some meaning comes across. Also, I can't get mad at Nintendo for removing the option to romance nine-year-olds in Fire Emblem Engage. Yes, there are some things which are just fine in other countries that aren't in uh, in others. That's kind of a truth of the matter. I mean, hell, there's a reason why uh, you actually get some games that get heavily localized for, like, the German market, for example. Because you cannot show blood. You cannot show... It's, there's a bunch of requirements to get into Germany that it does require, like, you have to change fundamental aspects of the game. You also end up with things in, like, the Spider-Man game where they localize the game to remove pride flags so they can sell it in Arabia and they have just American flags and stuff. It's it's shit like that. Yeah, it's, it's things like that. Like, I understand that when it comes to, like, cultural, like, legal perspective. Like, you have... When you have, like, legal situations involved, I... Unfortunately, what my my thing should be this. This this should be my thing first things first. Is you need to get approval of the person that you are effectively licensing it from and in turn you need to pretty much get all the okay pretty much from the top down. Where you need to say, "Hey, we need to change this." You send it over, they say, "Okay, we are we're giving you the allowance to change this." Uh I think a lot of 
a lot of people don't do that and because they're really cheap, shitty companies who get it done fast and get it done cheap. That's, I think, a big thing with a lot of, like, localization things. Yeah, the romancing children thing, pretty sure it's a case of Chinese writers being used to arrange marriages because they're all worded like you'll marry them someday. Like... I've read the I've read the Fire Emblem Engage scripts. I've I've read some of those because people were like trying to raise a big thing about it. Like, my thing would be if I was on the localization team, what I would do is really heavily. I, I would say more instead of like outright removing the that's angle of it. I would be like, hey, you know, for the future, or like ha you can or you can kind of position it more as like a childlike love, if that makes sense. Being like, yes, this nine-year-old loves you in the same way that, like, this child, like, but it's like, clearly it's like, yeah, no, this isn't that way. This is a literal child who really likes somebody. And it's like, okay, no, we're not, we're not going to factor this in. It's not romantic in any way or anything like that. It's clear, but it's kind of like a, this is a child, childlike innocence or some bullshit like that. But you get the idea, though. It's like, you understand that. Chinese fan subtitles have little no little to no localization doesn't make stuff impossible. To, yeah, uh, in, platonic in, in fa infatuation. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's one of those things where you see a lot in, um, you see that a lot in actually like j Japanese works where you see like a little kid, you see like in the manga or whatever being like, I love you, Oni Chan, I'll marry you in the future, where. We understand that as a context, it's a little child saying, ah, I love my, I love this person because I'm a stupid fucking five-year-old and that's just what it is. And then later on being like, oh no, oh well, high school boy, whatever the fuck is going on. It happens a lot. That's actually a very common thing in, Japan, in Asian countries, in fact. Uh, it's just been a trope that's been kind of reinforced over the years. It doesn't also help that... Um, Fire Emblem is supposed to be vaguely medieval, so it's like, oh, we can get away with a lot of shit like that. Not advocating for it at all, but bear with me. I'm trying to make my point here. I think the problem with a lot of localizing, because this is the one thing I learned. Someone pointed out this really, really smoothly, in fact, is any time you see translators working in entertainment, you have to understand they are not good translators. Not bashing fan translations, that's different. If you're a fan translation, that means you're going out of your way and you give a shit, but you're usually not getting paid. And if you are getting paid, it's Patreon or it's like a somebody is paying you to translate this thing. You know, it's it's a commission project or something. It's a little different. There is a a difference, you could say. Uh, but if, like in company company wise, we're looking at kind of larger scale operations here, macro scale. The translation, the, the translation offices you usually see doing entertainment media are the bottom of the barrel. And I don't mean that like they're bad. There are clearly completely competent people in there. And there's probably and they probably are very good companies with very good and all that bullshit. But they are not the good translators. They are not the ones who made it. Not even TTRPG market. I mean the animation market, game market, any form of uh, any form of entertainment media translation that is kind of more company scale tends to be lower quality. Simply because you gotta remember this: these are the guys who cannot make it into actual translation work. And by actual translation work, I mean legal documents, business documents, more of efficient like yeah it, it's more efficient effectively they can't make it in there and sometimes they're just not good sometimes they aren't fast some there's a variety of reasons and they pay dirt cheap they they pay you they pay shit <coughs> so it's not even like oh i will do the minimum if you pay me minimum wage no what happens is there's usually they they pay you and they pay but the problem is it's they pay you to go fast, and they pay you to do it quick. Because they don't care. Because there's another guy who's going to come in. If you quit, there's going to be another guy who comes in who's going to want to translate it faster and better. Because, like, this, what I'm doing, like, right here, uh, 
this is free. I, I'm doing this for free, and I'm even I even kind of like outright say like this isn't very good. This is just something. I'm pretty I'm pretty direct about it. That's why I actually post the you know the raws here. I post that to along I post that alongside everything else because my belief is there might be errors, and if there is, like you can double check my like the things that I wrote in. Yeah, it really does depend on the company as well, but that's like, you don't get a lot of people who want to do that. Because again, translating a legal document, you're going to get paid a shit ton more, you're going to be doing the things a lot, and it's going to be a lot more consistent than if you want to say, hey, I want to translate anime. That's not nothing. You don't get jack shit, and they don't care most of the time. Uh, and I think that the thing is, you, you know, for a lot of, like a lot of companies... That actually got rescinded. One got rescinded, actually. Because usually what happens is the Japanese company, once they license it out, they don't have any control over it. They don't They don't care necessarily. I wouldn't say they don't care, but it's kind of like, not our problem anymore. You fuck up, it's your problem, not ours. And it's that's what happened to the, the one of the more infamous ones here, actually. Um... I wonder if I can find... I wonder if I can find it. Um, this guy. Right here. Uh, I'm working on translation of Godagio Daigo. Read the one shot for this. This is, a, this is a lovely comic. This is actually a lovely manga. I think everyone should watch it. Uh, uh, about, a, about a giant hero, effectively. He, he's just... He's giant. That's his entire... That's his entire thing, is that he's just big. And that's the, the funny thing. He actually machine translated everything, and he's like, hey, I want to learn how to do this better. And willing to help us with Japanese English translation, we started working on language. He was less like, hey, I don't want to I don't want to go through it. I'm like, hey, I remember reading the one shot. It's very good translation. He wanted assistance. I wonder if I can find the person who was right here. Uh, it's a Katrina Leondakis. Uh, I genuinely, I do not understand why she is the way she, she actually, one of her things got, um, booted, if I remember correctly, and they actually had to do a reprint, because she added a bunch of things that weren't in there, uh, she, it was, it was not very good for that in, in the slightest, she is fairly notorious, as, like, one of the things is, she's the one who also potentially wants to fuck a dog, so, I mean... Shit happens, and you, you do see, you know, people all do care, effectively. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm hoping this gets full, more official translation. I, lo I love this comic, I love this art style, I think it's very cute. Uh, you know, and I, I'll, right here, I think this is perfect, I, I think it looks great. I was putting English text to call as it's time to see if we could do this quickly and easily. Yeah, it's, I, you know what? I'll even hit, hit the follow. Everyone should follow him as well. He's a very cool dude. Uh, yeah, they they actually rescinded that. Yeah, that was the that was the woman who did that. They um they rescinded that. Uh, reprinted everything. She got can. Now she's working on like the I got reincarnated as a girl's dog, and I want to like fuck her or something. And she's like, it's not for you, but it's like, no. Monka S. <laughs> yeah, Wi-Fi, yeah, translation reminds me of the Harmony Gold Robotech debacle. I had to mix three unrelated series together and fucked up the entire Macross series. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, we're talking a medium-sized publisher and they pay up the 600-page book with a budget of 10k euros. That is solid. That's, like, the thing is, you get so, like, the, the budgets are very small. Like, that's one of the issues. It's, the budgets are super tiny. But, again, you gotta remember, that's $10,000. That's 10,000 euro, if we want to kind of think about it more like this. That's 10,000 euro spread across maybe, like, two, three people. And you gotta do 600 pages. And it might take you hour, it might take you three hours to get a dozen, a hundred pages, you know, a dozen pages done. And that's if things go smoothly. If things don't go smoothly, it could take you a long ass time. It's that money quickly runs out. And I think that was like one of the reasons why uh, Ryutama 
Ryu Tama, Shino Megami, uh, Tenra Bancho Zero. If a lot of like Western, T you know, Japanese TTRPGs get released, don't ever see the continuation of them, <laughs> like the uh, Kat uh, K K Kodama Heavy Industries. Kodama Heavy Industries has failed every single one of their Kickstarters, spectacularly failed. Uh, they've delivered the book, but they've delivered none of the stretch goals that they promised. Because they get like a hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars, and then they have, then they quickly realize they have to pay a bunch of people, and that money goes, it's gone. The money goes away, and once the money goes away, you don't have it anymore, and then you need to do another Kickstarter to get all the money to succeed at the first Kickstarter, and then you're out of money for the second Kickstarter. It's this entire, it's just this entire messy cycle, and that's one of the reasons why we never really got any more of the double cross stuff. I think. Whereas that uh, uh, Ver Blue, I can't even remember what it was. The the company that did Double Cross effectively in the West, they disappeared completely. I could find nothing on them. Out of anybody, I think Cole might be able to find them, but I genuinely do not know what happened. I think they realized they bit off a lot more than they could chew and folded, because they just ran out of money. Because it's a very slow process. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you don't get paid jack shit for it. So it's like, I understand people who are like, hey, um, this sucks and we want money. On the other hand, it's like, like you kind of got to understand there's just not a lot of money in this, in this sphere, in the translation sphere anyway, uh, for people who aren't very good at it. Uh, let's see. The side, all rules, or email clover, uh, a rule book. Th mm. Rule book and the site. I'm going to do insert. I'm a little bit. The thing is, like, I'm a little bit uh, more open, you could say, with kind of like cha like blatantly changing things in the compilation just to make it easier. Uh, online, the online character sheet feel free for everyone to use. There is also a there's also a Google there's also a Google there's also. There's also a Google Sheets copy at the top of this document, as well as a PDF, as well as a PDF, PDF, cop, PDF copy. And I'm going to put a note for myself here. I'm going to put a note for myself there so I remember. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actual character sheet. Because what happened was, because a Londar here, I don't know if Londar you're here or not. Londar here was actually what we'd like to refer to as a real gamer. And he actually, I don't know if he already had this, if he just translated it or what. He actually made a um, character sheet for Emo Clore. Because if you remember last time, we were having a little bit of an emotional breakdown. Because uh, it, there, there just wasn't one. There was no character sheet available outside of the website version. So, um, yeah. Have no fear, everybody. We're saved. Good job, team. Classic Kickstarter strategy, Sons of Toa, fucked a lot of people doing Kickstarter upon Kickstarter. Wish to make legit scan with confrontation. <laughs> Top three company on the market, they called the glue, didn't pay right for two years before Chaos, he pulled the plug. Yeah, emotional folklore breakdown. <laughs> yeah, it's... That's like one of the things is... This is one of those markets that's small enough where you can fuck, like, in the tabletop role-playing game industry anyway, this is a market that you can very easily fuck over people, uh, very simply. Um, if we had a, one of the Russians here, they'd be able to back me up on that one as well. Like, the Russian market for ta for tabletop role-playing games is a fucking nightmare. Uh, it will... It, it Things just go wrong. And... Like no nobody wins with those, by the way. No nobody nobody wins with those. CC folio. Uh Uden Tom. Well, I'll put in Foundry, Roll20, 
and even table and even table tabletop simulator are all are are well known there we go put in some more ones that are more local to uh the us uh there's dice ball for the emo clore trp i'm gonna put a footnote here and i'm gonna put that as career prime dice bot dice bot in this context Um, do the necessary. Do another. I can do the necessary, but other. Uh, uh, but most other dice rolling dice rolling apps can do. Dice bond this context of the program. Will be provided by the DL. Official scenario distributed and many other sources are available. Talto on Talto booth, Pixif, etc. We'll need tunnel line on so if you're playing voice call, you'll need to prepare your calling your calling software, which will never be not be funny to me because it's very formal. It's Kino. Kino gaming. Fire him. God damn it, Risotto. Fire emblem anger sob edition. God damn it, Risotto. Yeah, like, it's... See, this is always funny, because I always have to, like, double back, go back and forth between the various ones. Uh, any tips for a new DM? Bot classroom deathmatch based on your recommendation. Most TRPGs are really overpriced where I live, so I found it dirty cheap. So the thing with... For a, for a brand new DM, if you've never DM'd a game before, the big... Th there's two things you gotta know. One, it's okay... And you Actually, I don't want to wear this. It's okay to plan ahead... But also understand that the millisecond, the millisecond, the legitimate like half quarter second players get involved, things are going to start going wrong. So the best way to think about it is do not plan like really strict events that are going to happen. Plan out things that will happen and kind of where they can kind of go, if that makes any sense. Make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit more grander. It is okay to plan out like events like, hey... Or classroom deathmatch, for example. Uh, classroom deathmatch, you know, at, you know, on, you know, halfway through session, you know, when this situation is under undergoing, there will be a, you know, one character, one of the other students will start shooting randomly at, at them. And that's like a problem that they now have to deal with. Not necessarily that they're going to hit them. But he's just shooting randomly. Like, this kid's got a fucking gun. He cannot control it, but it's still a dangerous weapon. What happens? What's going on? How do we solve it? Uh, present situations, not events that have a clear beginning and ending, if that's the best way to think about it. But, like, Classroom Deathmatch does do quite a few different things to help you out with that a little bit. Uh, but that's kind of the best way I can kind of think about it. A uh, big thing with Classroom Deathmatch to consider is... Make sure to tell your players it's okay to die, if that makes sense. Like, make sure to tell them, like, there's a good chance you're going to fucking die. However, that's on, that's on purpose. Like, don't, don't be, like, sad that your character died. Be excited for the next one. Like, that's the, like, get excited for the next character. Because now you kind of, now you know who's a bastard or whatever. You get out. You get, you, you're thinking, you're thinking what I'm thinking. Uh, let's see. Most of the time we get a lot of pushback release and most products get delivered. Once you Kickstarter a game and you get two to four year delay, some people just resell it. Yeah. It's, that's. You don't ask questions. Just roll character and get excited for next character. That's legitimately what you have to do, Risotto. The fun fact. Uh, because in classroom deathmatch, like a single bad roll will kill your character. And I'll be merciless, by the way, Siska. Just be fucking merciless. This is Battle Royale. Be mean. DCC, like... No, the thing with um, Classroom Deathmatch is that it is based off of Battle Royale, the movie. Not Battle Royale, but Battle Royales in general. And a lot of the characters... And they're supposed to be very fragile characters in most more than one way. It's a very open system. Uh... And 
and it's like, yeah, you fail a roll with a character very... With, pretty much how that system works is that if you fail a roll, somebody else is going to be narrating it, what occurs. So what happens is, let's say, oh, well, I need to, you know, like, we're trying to run across a field while someone's shooting, and I fail my roll. Someone might say, hey, you've been winged in the fight, you know, like, my, my enemy, I believe that's what they're referred to, rival, that's what my rival might narrate, hey, my wing, my leg's been winged. Like, I'm in now, I'm kind of, like, struggling, you know, I'm kind of, like, you know, hobbling a little bit. They could also narrate that, yeah, I've been a fucking eviscerated by the gunfire. However, Classroom Deathmatch does a really good job of mitigating that by the virtue of there are a hundred other students and you just take control of one of them the next day, which is like, hey. Hey, now here's here's the funny thing with that, McDrew Assault. Here, this, is, this is the funny thing with that like little trifecta with that little issue there. Uh, is that if next time you fail the roll, though, that guy is most likely going to be... <laughs> he's going to like to show up and give you the most malicious grin possible. So it's it's one of those things like you are... It, you're kind of encouraged to be mean about it, but you're also encouraged to not be mean about it. It's a nice... There's a little bit of a prisoner dilemma, but like, tell them, this is brutal, it's okay to die. Like, it's okay to get, like, hurt, and, and you, sometimes things are going to go wrong. And that makes a more interesting story sometimes. You know, it's about desperation. It's about people, you know, these underqualified people, underqualified children murdering one another. Uh, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, get them, get, make them, make them mean if that makes sense. Where the fuck did you get Classroom Deathmatch? So odd. That's, that's one of those games you just never... Nobody even, like, talked about it before I did my video on it. It was just like, hey, everybody, here's this thing. Ha ha ha. Even though that's, like, a vast majority of the things I go over. Here's this thing nobody talks about anymore. Ha ha ha. Okay, so... We're gonna keep everything like this. Uh, your resonator has been guarded by all of these. As you're feeling your action, your decisions, I will weave this story. Uh, the section is basic rule of playing the emo clore TRPG. The player who is to facilitate a session as a as a dealer, which no more detail rule. Please refer to D to the dealer section. D to the dealer section. Not going to worry about the dealer section. The resonator creation. My chance here, quirk of fate, or someone else's trick or you're by your own will. Either way, it's my chance, uh, by chance, by a quirk of fate, by someone else's trick or or by your own will. Either either way, you resonate. You've been chosen to be the character in a story with about an oddity. Uh, the player control, uh, player character controlled by the PL in a session is called a resonator. Called a resonator. Uh, start uh, by creating a reson resonator. Resonatore. El Resonator. Oh, uh, when the main character is at the story. Uh, we'll be spun in the future. Resonators are people who resonate within the story. Resonate within the story and become a part. And become the. Resonators are people who resonate with the story and become the. Involved in and become involved in the incident. What they want, they resonate with. It may, what they may, what they resonate with may be the oddity. You know, let's find the oddity, the funny word. We're using the Japanese brackets because this is what they insist on using. Therefore, I'm going to be using it just to maintain clarity. Uh, oddity, uh, maybe the oddity, oddity itself, or the feeling of people involved. Maybe, or they may resonate with it, with the story itself. Resonance is not required uh, by any special talent. Any person with the potential to resonate with the story, a variety of reasons. Chance, ca chance, cause, and effect, compatibility. And different professions, ability, and backgrounds, you're free to separate characters as much as your DL, scenario, and fellowship position. Sessions allow uh, characters. So, character, character, uh, two, resonation, creator. So, prepare a sheet in the email clerk, provide online character sheet. Uh, about to create. So, 
To give you all an idea uh, of this, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'm actually going to create a character with everybody. We're, gonna, we're going to create a, a character. Now, actually, what I should do is emoclore, copy of emoclore character created. I already made a character. Uh, anyway, I, I made a character as an example, just to, just to make sure, but we're going to duplicate him real quick. Just to make sure that we all know what we're doing. Just because I, I like going through examples with people. As you kind of see here, I've got all my base skills. Got everything that's important. Uh, I will most likely be doing some cleaning for this. So let's do... Let me click the right buttons. There we are. A company here in Brazil. Oh God, we've got, <laughs> you, we've got another Brazilian. And uh, join the join the ranks, everybody. <laughs> Again, like the, it's coming to the point where if I ever do a Kickstarter for a game, like the like the stretch goal number, like stretch goal numero uno will be just translating it into Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, those will be this the two that we have to. Those will be this the first two we get. And I will try to hire internally because I'm me. And we'll just like, hello, hello, fellow Brazilians. Get in design. Make a nice PDF, uh, Mr. Nope. I'm fucking terrible with character sheets. Uh, this isn't mine, by the way. Uh, this is uh, Alondar. This is actually somebody who's in here the other day, actually. Uh, kind of helping us out with some things. So he's cool. Don't worry. Make a nice PDF. Uh, I, uh, hey. The thing is, what we found out last time. This is this is the amusing thing you have to remember about this. Um, so here here we are. Here, here's emo chlor. Let me uh, let me show you what I mean by this being absolute pain. Um, I like this. Yeah, this is um this is the character sheet. There's no physical character sheet in the game. They're, they don't actually have like a physical character sheet for you to print. You have to use this, their like website to build character sheets. Uh, I was actually like, I was actually fairly desperate, not going to lie. I was very desperate for a moment there. I was like, oh fuck, I, I don't have any, I, I'm gonna have to make a new, I'm like, I'm gonna have to make a new character sheet. I'm gonna have to make everything. This isn't gonna work, fuck. Uh, and then Alondar being the real fucking hero shows up and he's like, Hello, hello, Notepad. It's me, the real hero. And does he? This is like, here's a character sheet. This is all you need. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. A uh, finally tabletop computer RPG. You know what? I'm gonna do a test here real fast. I got my phone out here right now. I'm I'm right here next to my lamp Lamborg. I'm I'm buying my Lamborghini right here. Um, I'm gonna bring out my phone. Ty, we, we should all tie Lopez Max. I'm actually going to go to the Emo Clore site. I'm gonna go to the Emo Clore website. I'm actually curious. Uh, they keep saying this like, oh, free to download indie Japanese TTRPG Emo Clore. It's not in English though. You, you, you gotta remember that. So if I go to their website, I'm, I'm making a, a wild bet here. That their website is very friendly to the phones. I'm gonna go here, emo 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 chlor character sheet dot jp of course. Okay, load up. I'm gonna log in. I'm gonna log in with my my tweeter my tweeter account. Uh. My my wild guess here is that you're supposed to be able to do almost everything. Yeah, I can kind of. I'm gonna click on uh, my my character here. I'm gonna click on him real fast. Yeah, like almost everything is able like to do stuff on your phone, and it looks amazing on your phone. So am I like if you were playing physical, mind you, if you're playing physical. The weird thing you have to remember is there's no physical book. You ha someone has to be online and have this open, and actually have this like sheet open, have this website open on their thing. 
If you're playing online, everybody already has it online. Or if you are playing physical, you're literally going to pull up your phone and you can see everything on your phone. So it's... I can kind of see what the, the one to two to three here was, if that makes sense. I understand why we are here, if that makes sense. So uh, obviously, let's... um. Uh, let's uh, let's try to find a picture of Ryan Gosling. We want to find Ryan Gosling. Uh, what would be a good? What would be a good uh, Ryan? Let's try to find uh, the most the, the most Ryan Gosling we can find. Uh, we need to we need to find the optimized Gosling. Uh, okay, you know what? I think this is our resonator right here. Let's let's resonate with Ryan Gosling, everybody. Are you ready to resonate with our with our with our strongest <laughs> become Ryan Gosling's largest fan? There we go. Ryan Gosling. We're gonna we're gonna make Ryan Gosling everybody as our sample character. <laughs> Actually, we need we need to make him legally distinct. We're gonna do uh there we go, Brian Bossling. His name is Brian Bossling. His age, old enough, old enough, gender, male, profession, ac actor, not really. Birthplace, Canada. Appearance, he's literally, he's literally me. There we go. That's all we need to know about Ryan Gosling. This is the beautiful thing, is that we can just do this. So, uh, what? what, what? <laughs> Just make AI. I, I would open it up if I wanted, to, if I could, but... Me, me when, me when, me when, me when I'm an Evo Clore character. He drives. Car career, he drives. Profession, driver. There we go. It all makes sense. It all adds up. There we go. Optimize Ryan Gosling. Yeah, no, the the original one I made, that's AI art. Literally just me typing in various uh various things to make him as anime as possible. So we've got our character sheet set up, obviously. A thousand different professions abilities. Okay, so we've got this. We don't need to worry about this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna select here. I'm gonna put you on a different sheet. So first imagine character of your resonator and think about the setting. It can be something similar to yourself or someone completely different. Been in, if you have been given handouts in advance, use the information handout as a starting point. Following is roughly the thing you can decide on the setup. You do not need to decide everything you decide. Uh, and you made. You do not need to decide on everything. Or you can choose to go into detail. Uh, name, uh, name, gender, hometown, personality, background. Character, external characteristics, background, of the past people involved, likes and dislikes. Um, we're going to find... I'm doing it now just to spite, um... Droid sense. Ten, just to make sure McDrusalt knows that I'm doing it. Because I'm a bad person. Uh, we want to do. So we'll do light. We'll do darker gray to kind of understand what it is. We'll go here where we will. Not in there. We, go. So we kind of understand converting care from other TRPGs or your own creation. We're not gonna have that. We're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna add the fact that you can technically. Yeah, that's one of those weird things about this particular game is that you can, by technicality, they, they do go out of their way to be like, yes, you can totally make a completely unique character. Alternatively, you don't have to, and you can just. Convert a character of your choice. I don't know why this is here, but it just it just is. Uh, continuing resonator, continuing resonator. You should participate in continuing resonator. Uh, please make sure to apply. Uh, please make sure to inform. Uh, to wire with 
with the DL. Please, please tell the fucking... Uh, please, please, God, tell your GM what you're going to do. Uh, so we can actually get rid of the entirety of the Japanese thing. We're going to do that. Bro. Resonator is following eight abilities. So actually, I'm going to double check this real fast. We're going to go here. I do have this open just because I like double checking. Abilities. Attribute. Ability. I don't know where capabilities came from, but it's abilities. I guess capabilities would also work. Uh, I'm going to change this to... Because this is like ability value, ability value. Everything's ability score. So I'm going to change it to ability scores. Then we're going to change this to ability scores. So. You go here. Also, if you've never watched Lars and the Real Girl, you show, you very much should because it is a fucking heart-wrenching uh, emotional odyssey. So I'm actually going to use what was written in here a little bit more because it makes a lot more. So we have spirit, uh, body, dexterity, spirit, five senses, intelligence, charm, society, society, and it says luck. Uh, I do like fortune more personally, so we're changing it to fortune. Uh, I think it, because the thing is they use luck later on as like a skill for it. So it's fortune, luck, it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, is there any particular reason why I'm doing that? Do, like, do I do I secretly hate every? No, I I just think it sounds better. There we go. And yes, we are keeping the emojis. It is very essential that we keep the emojis. So we've got all this. So we need to each ability represent an integer from one to six. Fortune, please submit to, uh, uh, we do accept fortune. Please feel free to reassign dice 25 points in any seven categories, except the fortune. Random button to assign ability value. You can also modify the attributes assigned for your character. Fortune roll six out of dice and under uh, number rolled is the ability is the ability score. Since we're capital, we're going to capitalize the idea of ability score because that's the that's the term we're going to be using is ability score ability ability score presented by a number. We're not into we don't need to add in one to six. I remember the greater the power. Or is average human is average human value. Three to four is the human, is the human average. There we go. Oh, we do. Oh, no, go away. No, I don't need you. Never needed you. So we do this because we want to keep things looking consistent because I'm me and I always like double checking these things. Mm -hmm. uh, ability points with disparate assigned all 25 points. There we go. So to uh, give everybody the idea of how this that, how this works, so let's just assign zero to everything here. Luckily, they do actually have a thing here. First, let's roll our fortune. I'm gonna roll our fortune, everybody. How lucky is Ryan Gosling? Where is the coveted sob emotion? Let's let's determine our fortune. How much like which version of Ryan Gosling are we? We rolled a one, everybody. We are not going to be a good Gosling. We are we are not going to have a good time. Luckily, since we are the driver, we're going to get a uh, we'll say a we'll say a five in our dexterity. Oh yeah, gamer. Uh, let's see. Uh, charm, charm. I'm not feeling it. I'm feeling low charm. Society. Well, we're not very society prone. We are literally though, Ryan Gosling, and because Ryan Gosling and I, feeling how he is literally me. 
Uh, let's bump up that. Uh, spirit is usually pretty good. Uh, we'll make a pretty average body. And if we do intelligence, that means we have three points left. Not a ghostly, but a boss. <laughs> let's, uh... We can do... How about... How about this? This is our this is our Ryan Gosling, everybody. We're very fast, very I can't believe no bad is doxy himself. This <laughs> He's literally me. You don't understand. He's literally me. Yeah, uh Yeah, uh, as you can kind of somewhat tell, luck is uh struggling horrifically. I like that character. It, the thing is that I'm very happy with is that if I hit this, I can actually print everything out, relatively speaking. So uh, that's what we'll do to make a PDF, actually. But yes, here's a here here's our here's our Gosling. <laughs> Everybody can become Ryan Gosling now. I want a society where we all are Ryan Gosling. Yeah, uh, Fortune is one that's like. You're, you can get fucked very easily if you just don't roll very well in fortune. Uh, because ha ha ha, fuck you. There, there is legitimately no other reason than ha ha ha, go fuck, once you, then uh, go, so go fuck yourself. It's just like, that's all, it, it's like, oh. Once the ability scores are determined, calculate HP and MP. This will oh, delete, delete two columns, delete the row, hit points is just Body do that hit point center mill. I said wanna do mail properties bottom middle top center top bottom. This legitimately is it just having a stroke. It's just having a stroke. I understand completely now. There we go. Sometimes it just, that's just how the, the the cookie crumbles. It is what it is. There we are. Uh, once the ability scores, scores are determined, calculate HP, MP. That's, that's it, everybody. And actually, let's see, can we put this on? Yeah, we can put this on the same page. There we go. That looks pretty fine. That looks nice. Skill. I'm going to do skills right here. Acquire skills. Skills are for the, the, the uh, did you determine the character's actions? Use the character use the, uh, determine the resonator resonators at our uh actually the skill uh, skills are the talents. Skills are the talents the resonators acquired. For more information, please please refer to the skill list. Uh, skills have levels in principle. Level three is the maximum. So we're going to do this. Uh, limited information. Hobbies. Mm -hmm, there we go. Nice and simple. I'm not going to add any artwork, obviously, to this because I can't really. Okay, so we're gonna do this center, top, or middle. So obviously we need to get rid of you. Actually, here's what we can do. We're gonna put column over here. We're going to get rid of you. We're going to put you over here. to this the higher the, the more points uh, the more points is cons uh, the higher skill level the more points are consumed points in consumption are as well level one we're gonna do level one dash one point level two five points level three 15 points examples of skill acquisition Three times one, two times two, 25. Uh, there we go. So a total of 30 points. 
equals total of 30 points. We do that. We do that button. As a combination with the total that you may acquire, 30 different or only level 3 skills. Oh. So, this is a little bit confusing because they, for some reason, they give you an example of it, like right away. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say example of skill of skill acquisition. But yeah, effectively how this works is we go over here. We are, you're always going to have your basic skills. You're also going to have always have resonance. Resonance is a special skill though. So, fortune, all our skills here, we don't need to worry about them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh no, they're all gone now. But put you up here though. But what I'm going to do actually, because technically right after that, it's like, oh, here's skill sets. And, oh, here's skill sets and stuff. So we do actually, let's talk about skill sets. Skills include investigative and perceptual skills. Investigative and perceptual skills. Let's see over here, we'll just pierce so you basically so basically so um talk about some base skills. Base skills is an asterisk in the name of the skill, such as perception uh, such as perception. That sorry if I'm not responding. Basic skills skill everyone has from the beginning or present the basic skills of each resonator and are fixed at level one. Fixed at level fixed at level one. And that means that, and let's see. Resonance, resonance fix a level one, and that means that the you resonate. The resonator cannot spend, cannot spend points, cannot spend points to increase, to increase their level. Increase their level can be used, used in place of an unacquired. Pretty much the, the base skill is your uh, get out of jail free card. Like that is like a very major concept is like you have to have this get out of jail free card. Uh, inspiration, EX skills are more powerful to acquire twice, twice as many skill points. Uh, two point and thirty points. If the EX skills level three, it alone consumes all of the skill points. Yeah, at first this sounds a little bit odd, but it, it does make, it does technically make sense. Uh, then we're going to, going to do the resonant skill, actually, because resonant, actually, no. How do we want to do this? No, we're going to do this right here. We understand this. What we need to do now is we need to go all the way down here before we even do anything, mind you. And we need to do the list of skills. There are a list of skills. We're going to do heading three. Move for skill section. Hmm. There we go. Original skills and suit your scenario, setting, etc. This is one of those things where I'm making like kind of a kind of a call to kind of a call to change some change an aspect of things because uh, I feel like I need to. We do research base skill. Okay, so we do that. So judgment value is dexterity. Intelligence plus skill level. Judgment value. Because the thing is, I don't know why they... They some reason do not explain this until much later. You have to go to a different, like, part of the character... Like, a different part of the website to actually learn this. But this is technically what they're talking about. So appraisal, um, basic skill for researching and obtaining clues. A large amount of information. If I mean, if we.
search insight mapping intuition appraisal so to give you to give everyone kind of like a basic idea of how this functions of so let's say for example we're, we're playing obviously we're playing the, you know, the our very handsome boy here so our research as you can kind of see here our research skill is right here it's a base skill my virtue of being a base skill it is a five it's one plus whatever our dexterity is and oh no that's all it is so pretty much we have just our base value that's all it is really technically you should should be higher why are you Why is it three? Why are you doing this? Why are you the way that you are? It's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be three. I don't know what's going on. It's just not work. Ma magic man, me, me no want work, me no understand. But generally speaking, this is actually how the game works here. If you were to take a skill, let's say, for example, let's take insight. Oh, I might go here, and let's say I'm going to take Insight at level 2. Okay, good job, team. Here's Insight. It's going to be using, since we look at our Insight, it's going to be using our Intelligence score. So our Intelligence, as you can tell, is 3. So it's 3 plus 2. Technically, that should fill up with both, but it's not. But uh, don't, don't think about it too hard, okay? It just works. So yeah. There we go. It's since it's two. I don't know what's going on here. It's not working anymore. Eh, magic man, me no won't work. Uh, but we pretty much need to roll under a five to score successes. Pretty simple to understand. However, out of our little 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 pool of resources here, our thirty pool, we've now had to spend five of that. So we're now down to twenty-five. That's pretty much how it works. It's very simple to make a character. So yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the basics here. So I'm actually going to uh, going to put uh, here. I'm going to do 25. Oh, I know. Technically, this should be doing things. Uh, it's not. I don't know what's going on. It just it just works. Okay, guys, it just works. So if we go over here and then we go to our perceptual skill, perception skills. Uh, uh, let's see, the skill system using the five senses. Hmm. Skills, a uh, skill that you, a uh, skill, I should, I should say, skills that use the five senses are, uh, are skills. Investigative, investigative skills are, ta are, balance for finding clues and information. There are differences in method of obtaining the information depending on the skill. We use the five senses, so we select all of you. A lot more here, including psychic ability, because psychic senses are a thing in this game. Uh, let me just double check. So this is five senses. Five senses, five senses, five senses, or fortune. Yeah, crisis detection is very good, and crisis detection is very good because it allows you to say, oh no, there's a problem here, and I don't want to die. Uh, the five seconds and the six sense. Psychic senses, our first EX skill here is actually, as you can kind of tell. So we do all that. Uh, do we want to take any skills here? Do we, are we thinking any skills here? I'm thinking we're going to take observation. We're going to take observation at one. And I think we're going to take a uh, crisis detection. Crisis detection at one. 
So, and because we're using observation, we kind of see here five senses. We select that. And hey, because we're looking at uh, crisis detection for five senses as well. Five senses is five. We add one skill. So we go. It, both of them would be six. We did it, everybody. Let's actually check. Would be. Haha. I am right. I am correct. Go team. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. Kind of see that's how it works. Since we did two points there, we're now down to 23 points. Pretty simple to understand. Spirit or fortune. Pretty easy to understand there. We're making evasion use one round. Evasion to counter judgment avoids and nullifies an attack. Or successfully attacks the round progression in the detail. Creation skills. A uh, skill system for listening. Uh, a skill for a skill for eliciting information, passing requests of the interaction with people. There are differences in method of obtaining depending on the skill. Mm hmm. Technically, you can become a psychologist in this game. Um. Generally speaking, though, it's um, pain. And if you want to do just pain, you can technically just be pure pain. Uh, let's do that. So we want to do judgment value is charm, I believe. That's what we're calling it as. We're calling it charm, not attractiveness. Charm. Social is society. It is actually uh, social. Actually, we're taking it to social or society. We're calling it society. Society, everybody. Let me tell you a little bit about society. Intelligence plus skill level. Maybe you can capitalist for skill level up here. Or keep it. We want to keep things consistent because consistency is golden, everybody. Remember that. Consistency saves lives. I'm not, again, if I'm not responding right away, that means I am very focused right now. And I, when I am focused, I see God. I'm probably going to have to go through here and replace things like the oddities, but I just want to get everything down pat first. Uh, so in case you're wondering, like, oh, why isn't he you know, responding right away and why is he not fixing that? It's because I just want to do that later because it's a little bit easier to do all at once. But uh, this would be spirit or intellectual or intelligence. Intelligence plus skill level. Sanity, awareness, player succeed. To recover from insanity. Strange psychology using uh, strange. Uh, to recover from insanity. Strange psychology. Strange psychology. So using psychology, using psychology, you can try to bring someone back. Note, oh, didn't mean to add, open up a new sheet. I want to do, nope, recover from, I'm going to do this. Wait, insanity, awareness, awareness of the bizarre mind. So let's see, is there any... Any skills we should take in here, everybody? Should we take any fun skills? Uh, obviously, we're not going to take any social art skills. What do you think we are? Communists. Uh, however, I feel as though we need to take... We can... You know what? Let's take psychology. Let's Let's... We can, we, we can take if we take a psychology at one point, we can sub it out for our spirit senses, or we can actually take it at let's take it at two points, everybody, two whole points. And if we take it at two whole points, it's going to cost us five points, so we're down to eighteen points, everybody. But hey, we are now psychology man. We're we're getting in your mind because he's literally me, guys. You don't understand. Ryan Gosling is 
quite literally me. Okay, so we do this. Uh, resonance should not be up here yet. Resonance is a weird skill because it is... Resonance is and is not a skill. It's a skill by virtue of what how the game mechanics work. Uh, system skills determines person not... Uh, knows. Knows. Uh, knows. Facts or information. Got facts or information. That and there aren't many skills in this game actually. I, I thought for a while there was like, wow, there's a lot of skills here. There really isn't. There is not actually like a super like a super lot of skills. I think the the idea would be there's a lot more skills that are more It looks like there's a lot, but there really isn't. That makes any remote amount of sense. So society, society. I'm a fool. I know nothing. I don't like a silly clown. <laughs> That's your ability to keep up with the news. The news, everybody. With Mr. Murphy. Skill level. Skill level intelligence. Judgment value intelligence. Uh, technically, this is a base skill. If I recall correct, this is considered to be a skill. Let's double check because I'm like, yeah, this is a base skill. So if we want to do. Do that. Let me just double check. This is like one of those things where I just need to like double check later on just to make sure that everything is like just perfect. I'm me and like to make sure of that. Uh, technically it'd be charm. We want to take any skills in here. No, I don't think we will because we don't need to be smart because he's literally me. Uh, and luckily for everybody, uh, luckily for everybody involved, I'm fucking stupid. Let's do this skill system that used body or tools. Use body and tools different depending on the skill. Also used for attack and evasion in combat. Yeah, body skills are probably the thing you should be investing in the absolute most. Uh, mostly because uh, they're just useful in like every situation physically possible. And there's literally really no, there's no situation in which these are not valuable, if that makes sense. Outside, if you want to play a very particular kind of character. And if you're trying to play a very particular kind of character, why? It's fucking folklore. You really shouldn't. Um... Uh... Okay, so let's do bot Betty Betty Skill level Body 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 or Dex. Dexterity plus skill level. Ah, Oof. just my just my back here real fast. We body 
that plus skill level fighting is a base skill fighting is actually a base skill i forgot about that so we don't actually add our uh, base skill dive is not because we the weird thing is like fighting is an ability everybody technically has because it needs to give you that ability to do it. but it's also like movement is its own thing it's a base skill for all physical exercise but you can also invest points into speed if you want, that's a thing you can do. If you want, uh, let's see, proficiency in close combat skill. Uh, skill is acquired by stating the type of martial art. One character may choose this more than once. Character has the skill, and we want one appropriate, appropriate to the martial art. Uh, we do. This skull indicates proficiency with a specific note. This skill. Uh, we do that. Let's do. Yeah, this is one of those things like that. I this is one of those things where I might decide to like footnote these in particular, or like put them at the end as kind of more of a special thing. But uh, that's kind of, um, I don't quite know how I want to do that yet. Spirit or plus a skill level. Check this first. We want to find you. We want to find the damn skill. We really want to find the skill list. There we are. Yep, this is it. Uh, we want to <laughs> Dendum damage. Damage from deepness. I keep saying damage from deepness. Uh, note mystery damage. Uh, I believe what this is, because if we look at this word right here, it's the same here. It's the same going both ways. So I believe that is ma you know it's you know from damage from star mastery of close quarters combat. If a melee attack with a skill hits number six has d6 weapon damage. So let's double check. So skills compatible with uh skill that upwardly compatible. Yo, know, this terms if you were allowed to carry a weapon this session, the name used both directions said I took it easy, I let the blow I let the blow go outside, I attacked the part of the body that's stunned. Uh number of reaction increase forfeiting an action that round, see round progression. So Yeah, this is a little bit one of those odder ones, but it makes complete sense of what it's actually trying to say here. Throwing. Technically, throwing is a basic skill. Yo, ah, uh, God. We can't put everything in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do not that, not anything what I just did there. We're going to do this. We're going to hit that. We're going to hit over here. And then we're going to extend this out just a little. Let's eyeball it a little bit there. Delete row. So we this is going to be its own, its own page technically. But that should be fine. There we go. Mm. Yeah, technically it's saying I have a gun.
Yeah, it's the thing is, I I do not actually str I do strongly believe I don't think we'll ever see the Sword World books 2.5 anyway come out more legitimately. Uh, I really wish that we would, but uh, I don't. I I do not believe that in a in a moment that it'll happen. Uh, simply because like it it just die on impact. I think in a lot of places. So let's see. We've got some skills. Uh, we've got our fighting skill, obviously. Let's do. Um, let's add in another skill here, real fast. We're going to add in the only skill available for us. We're going to do martial arts. Do martial arts. Uh, we're going to do drive foo, obviously, uh, because we, of course, we are adept. Adept, you could say at uh, being able to beat the shit out of our enemies. Uh, not really anything else, though. We're, we're not actually very good at fighting, but we definitely know how to punch somebody in the face using the power of the stash. Like, that's... Have no fear, everybody. We know drive-foo. But have no... Even better, everybody. Uh, let's do survival skills. The fucking survival skills that are so... For uh, a series of talents used to mitigate, uh, mitigate or recover from damage to the body or mind. Uh, each talent is used under. Each skill is used frequently under. Please refer to that section for more information. Yes, this is uh, effectively your ability to survive horrific damage. Uh, and if you don't have at least like one of these skills properly. Uh, you will die. Like, you're just not going to have a good time. Like, you're going to just have the worst time, in fact. You will you will most likely not... Doesn't matter how cool you are, you will, you will be dead. You will be a dead man. And everybody is going to laugh at you. Uh, let's see. We, okay, we finally got our special skills. Uh, that does remind me what we need to do. Before I forget, obviously, we need to select Drive Car uh, 3. I believe Drive Car is... It would be 5 cents. We can use 5 senses for it. There we go. <laughs> That's uh, 15, 15 points. Oh, no. Uh, if we bump that up, that'll bring us back to 18, 18, so we go down to 17, now we just have two. Okay, there we are. <laughs> it is essential I take drive at rank three, so I definitely know how to drive. Okay, so, determines body, 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 body. Your level... Uh, skill level. <laughs> uh, push harder for the French side, trust me. Uh, the Universal Sword World 1 was translated early on, me and re replaced D&D &D fantasy game that runs, runs the market. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I get an interview one on one with the publisher, I will make some TRP lobbies. Yeah, exactly. Ryan needs to be able to drive. It's the thing is with Sword. It, it's kind of interesting with Sword because I do like every now and again you you see like interviews and stuff. There are D and D abus there, which I find very funny because you'd be like, oh, well, of course Japan is going to want to just play its own games. It's not going to want to play filthy Gaijin games. No, there's actually a lot of guys who like this. Like we just like playing D and D because that's the fun one. I find that very funny. Gutsu. Ego. Guts. Uh, I guess we can use. Uh, I guess we'll take guts one. Uh, guts one uses spirit because uh, we are gutsu. Yeah, guts is actually super important <laughs> uh, because that allows you to just resist death. Stands on the brink of death. Yeah, like you are. If you do plan on getting into combat, like, not having a good gut score will kill you. You are not... You are not going to have a good time. Uh, decrease each, uh, decision regardless of, uh, success, psychological... Uh, domain of the psychologist. 
uh, uh, judgment value of wound healing. Uh, intelligence uh, is half of the ability. Uh, fractions are rounded up. HP recovery by treatment. There we go. For each HP reduction damage from wound, one treatment. One treatment uh, can be performed. Decision successful HP to restore number of times. Uh, D3, number of successes, D3. Medical arts, dexterity, intelligences. Skill level. So we've got one. I believe we have one, one ability left. Uh, we, we've really, we've become a real hero. Let me just double check on the recover HP fast. Um... Yeah, the rest, that's re resuscitation. We add our skill level? No, we don't actually even add our skill levels. Is this considered a basic skill? No, I... Okay, no, 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 okay. I'm, uh, there we go. Yeah, recover HP is a base skill, is a basic skill. Um, That, resuscitation. Resuscitation is really fucking good. Uh... Judgment values, half the ability value, fractions are rounded up. This is not increase with skill level. Dice increase with skill level. Yeah, like, technically with resuscitation, you don't get any bonuses. You, you don't actually increase the, the skill. It just means the base amount of skill the points you can use to bring someone back to literal fucking life. Uh, mostly when you are recovering from calm, uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. Because that's what happens when you go down in this game. You start having a fucking heart attack. Uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. Judgment is successful. The gugment is... Uh, the car... No. No, that brings us to... Not survival skills. We do special skills. Uh, special skills groups uh, that special skills ones that do not fit into the fit into the other categories. Substitution skills determined on a situation by situation basis. Yeah, this is the one where you can have the ex skill of having just strong luck or being. Quite literally, you can have the super-powered ability of being luckier than lucky people. Man, I sure do love being just naturally more lucky than others. Uh, typical skill... Hmm... Yeah, technically you can have uh, instant messengers. You can have the ability to be really good at instant messenger. Uh, technically, with the technique, you can take uh, your. You can become an A class shit poster if you really want. Friends, because contract with Gale Force Nine was just because didn't want to make a work in translation early on. They contract uh, contract local publish. Wanted to have the right back and published every lingo and try to fuck everyone. Resulting two to three, no products publishing in Japan and France. <laughs> yeah, it's... The thing is, like, Japanese D&D &D is actually very different. Because they obviously have to, like, fit to the market. Because they ain't stupid. But the thing is, the market just doesn't play the way that we do. Like, here in this, like, here West... We Westoids, they don't play the way we do. And because of that, the, like, D&D &D over there apparently is very different. Like, they have a bunch of different, like, just weight assumptions and ideas over there. And because they like having the, you know, obviously they have things like, um, the, uh, the replays and shit like that. Like, that's actually, like, a big thing over there. Like, you don't think about it as, like, an American. Being like, oh, yeah, like, uh, everyone plays D&D &D the same. It's D&D. &D. I remember there was a Japanese guy who was on the Twitter once, and 
it, it was funny because like I really like D and D. I don't know what's going on though. Why why is everybody so mad at D and D? And it was just like it was right during the heart of the fucking OGL crisis. And it was just like my brother in Christ, you have kicked the cor- the hornet's nest. You fool. You you absolute baboon. <laughs> Uh, concealed hide the ability to hide something from someone. If you want to judge me, you can hold your hand. You can. If you want to hide something, you can hold in your hand. You can do it with craft. Have a. Uh, use perception to find a place to hide. So you can use perception. Let's see. You can use perception to find a place to hide. You can do it with craft. What is... What do you want about my craft? Uh, craft. Craft. It keeps talking about craft. You need a skill to hide something while collecting. Perception. Workmanship. I believe it's trying to say workmanship. Because that would make sense. Yeah, it's workmanship. So it's, uh... Because it's not that. It's would-be workmanship. That's what we're using. So it's like, can do with workmanship or perception to find place to hide. There we go. Uh, we do that. Okay, so let's see. We, we've got uh, our two points left. Our two points left. Uh, what do we want to pick up? What do, what do we really feel in here? Technically, we can take a level one in something. We can take one level in... You know what? We can take if we want, since we got to mastery of CQ, mastery of CQC drive, uh, drive foo. We can take one level in it. Uh, we can then use our, we can use our, uh, we can use our spirit for it. Yeah, technically, we can use our spirit for our mastery of drive foo. Actually, what would be better? Actually, you know, if we use our... No, we use our dexterity for it. There we go. We can use our dexterity for it. Because we are that good at being able to beat the shit out of people. There we are, everybody. We've done it. We've made Ryan Gosling. This will probably get fixed up a little bit. I will probably go through and like just double check to make sure everything looks all right. But yeah, there we go. That's that's really all you need to do to make a character. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Then technically we have the resonance skill, which the resonance skill is going to go. We need to go all the way back up. Because if we go all the way up here, we hit this. We're gonna learn about all our. We're gonna learn about our special. Uh, actually, no. You need to be special skills. You need to go as heading four, because then we're gonna learn about how to how infinite resonance works effectively. Human limit skill level goes above 10, the resonator will deviate and something irreversible will happen. Is the idea of inf uh, well, infinite resonance. Yo, meh. As long as you are a resonator, you cannot escape from resonance. You cannot escape from resonance. 
Which creator who is more susceptible to uh, to resonance? You can spend skill point to obtain one or two more. You can literally spend levels to get uh to, to fuck you over. Effectively, that's what it's telling you, and it's uh very funny, and you should definitely do it. You in no way will be harming yourself by doing this. Uh, I have not a single clue why you would. Actually, no, there's exactly one reason you, you would do this, and that's if you pretty much want to either die early or you want to do something with the... Uh, actually, let's see. Feel the president of an oddity, of an oddity, or a oddity. We'll do a oddity. I think that's... Natural phenomenon, strong emotion, distorted by the presence of an of a oddity. Your she resonates and is affected by a resonance skill that indicates the degree of resonant. The resonant person has been eroded by the resonance occurs special judgment called a resonance judgment. Resonance judgment occurs. The skill level is and the skill level uh, gradually increases. And resonator becomes more and more affected by the oddity. Your influence becomes stronger and stronger. Oh no. There we go. Nations refer to this. So technically what we need to do now as we need to go all the way back down here and then we need to find our resonance skill right here then we go down here then we post it here we go all the way over There we are. So now we're we've established like, hey, this is this is a thing that exists here. Please make note of this. We've tied it as a skill together. Make sure you understand what this is. That's the main thing I want to get across here. We bring you down to six. We make you as small as possible. Level of acquisition of resonance. All resonators of uh, the first level, if you wish to create a character more susceptible, upper limit of resonance. The resonance level, um. First thing he goes, male complex, uh, quality as the deviant, instead of deviation, the deviant. Oddity. Go. Oh. Get out of here. So what are we doing today? Today is we are compiling the the raws, effectively, of the emo clore tabletop role-playing game. Uh, uh, which... Seconds. There we go. Maybe we should... The this is a very odd game. This is a this is a JTRPG. We are compiling all the information together into a nice simple PDF for everyone to enjoy, uh, because I have a strange feeling not everybody in the world speaks Japanese, and I would like to have people who learn more about Japanese and Japanese games because I enjoy Japanese RPGs, and that means I want you to enjoy Japanese. Uh, because I'm me, and I can do that. Uh, so let's do... Judgment value. So pretty much, I already translated everything, technically. What I need to do now is put it all together. So, uh, each skill has a judgment value. Each skill has a... Judgment, judgment value to... Fucking E, I always put the goddamn E in. Why do I do this to myself? But yeah, 
pretty much we're just taking everything that needs from one side to the other and cleaning things up as it happens. Higher the value of the decision. There we go. Higher the value, the judgment value. Basically determined by the ability value, by the ability, uh, ability score and skill level. Example, listening ear, five senses, ability score, score, plus listening ear, skill, level. Listening, listening ear, listening ear, judgment, judgment value, equal five senses, Five senses, ability score plus listening ear level, speed, speed, judgment, judgment value equal body ability, ability score, ability score plus speed skill level. However, oh, calculation uh, depend is different for some skills. For some skills, it's possible to select a, an ability score. Only score to be referenced, or for others, judgment value. Value remains the same, even if the skill level increases. Let's see, the formulas for calculating on for each skill list of skills. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, pretty simple to understand there. Okay, so next we actually have to move to the resonance. So the resonance emotion gets a little bit wonky, but it's kind of easy to understand. Resonance emotion represents a type of emotion which a resonant person is likely to resonate. This is the literal technical term for what this is. It is a resonant emotion. Uh, <laughs> it is a resonant emotion that will resonate with the resonator. Why do they name it this way? I don't fucking know. Welcome to Japan, everybody. Uh, thank you, I shall. I've been reading Sword World for the, for the past three days. I'm almost through Core Book 1. Yeah, it's... Sword World is not... How do I want... Sword World looks like a lot. Like, here's the thing you gotta remember, in Karzin, uh, when you're reading Sword World. If you notice something you've already kind of picked up on, it's okay to skip some bits because it's like... All right, everybody. It's... It's time for us to teach you all how to buy items. Do I reduce the amount of money I have to purchase an item? Yes. Now here's another example of how to buy item. Like, no game! <laughs> uh, when you start getting through Core Book 2 and 3, yeah, it gets better. Uh, yeah, Emoclore is... Emoclore is such a fascinating fucking disaster area. I love it to death. Uh, so, I'm resonating! You don't understand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resonate. Uh, let's see. The resonant emotion requires type of emotion where a resonant person is likely to resonate. I'm gonna actually put a footnote here just to make sure. Yes. Yes, this is how it is. This is, yes, this is how it is written. And yes, it is correct. Yep, I'm, I'm just gonna put that as a note in there. Be like, yes, this is this is how it is written, and yes, it is correct. This is just something we all gotta live with, okay? So on account of such a strong emotion, people encounter. Uh, let's see, strong emotions of of I'll say others. The I would say I'm gonna put the resonator. Resonator will be most more affected by the oddity. From the list of resonant resonance feelings, like three feelings that the resonant that the resonator has, resonator has identify or easily influenced by. Basically, choose three emotions. Find one for uh, the front, back, and root. So we're going back to you. Front uh, emotions are outwardly perceived by others. So we kind of get the idea. Pretty much like your front emotion is something that's immediately obvious. Your back emotion is something that kind of lurks inside of you. And your root is something that is fundamental to who you are in more than a few different ways. Uh, 
So what I'm going to do is we actually also did this because this is on a, another sheet, mind you. Why is this on another sheet? I don't know. Maybe God is dead. Uh, this is just something that's the game likes to do, I've learned. Uh, yeah, this is just what they do. I don't know why they they kind of do it this way. They assign it to, you know, uh, resonance emotions are listed as format. Go. There we go. We kind of that. We just kind of sample longing ideal. So if we kind of wanted to kind of give you an idea of like, okay, so this is it. So if we go over here. To uh, our character of Ryan Gosling, or Brian Bossling, everybody. Our surface emotion, our surface emotion, might be something like, uh, well, uh, where, where, what do we, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to do a uh, desire. It would be something like desire. Actually, no, it would be um, how do we want to do uh? You know, we can do stoicism. Technically, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll play it by, we'll, we'll play it by this. Uh, it'll be, um, self-expression, desire. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be there. Uh, his inner, inner demon, of course, would be, uh, anxiety, passions. Passion, and then his emo his his personal one, of course, would be loneliness, and that would be a wound. That's that's how it works. Uh, in more gameplay terms, <laughs> excuse yourself. You meant to say disaster class success. <laughs> What is this game even about? Uh, the best way to think about how this game is, is emotional folklore. Uh, in a more in a more succinct way as of kind of putting it, um, things that make more sense. This is effectively, you are a resonator. You are someone who has somehow matched with the story of a, a haunting, a piece of folklore, a creature that is maybe not entirely right. And it, you, since you and this creature are kind of vibing with each other too much, you're trying to fix it. It's trying to influence you because it wants to possess you, and you obviously want it to make it stop doing whatever the fuck it's doing. The best way to think about it on the sliding scale of of uh, Cthulhu and Scoo Call of Cthulhu and Scooby Doo, uh, it's like pretty firmly in the middle. It's not like Delta Green Nightmare Simulator, like. Oh no, there's a cultist, what do I do? Pop it in the fucking kneecap. But it's also not like it's old man Jenkins. <coughs> <laughs> that should be the uh just the, the ratings. Like, is it Delta you know, on a scale to Delta Green to Scooby Doo, where does your horror game fall? Like And uh th this is pretty pretty firmly in the middle, however. Like this is a I wouldn't say it's like a super friendly game. It's just like there are some like, oh wow, there's some there's some spooky things going on, but it's not. It's also very much not that at the same time. Uh, system's a little bit. I won't I won't lie about that. System is a little is a little bit strange. Uh, this completes. Uh, this completes character. This completes. Uh, this completes the creation of the resonator. Yeah, this is a our entire character, by the way. This is Brian Bossling. It doesn't take too long to actually make a character. Uh, to the point where it's actually a little overly simple. Uh, and that's going to be that's going to be a note in the uh, video. It's like, yeah, you're not really designed to like get really emotionally invested in these characters cuz they gonna fucking die. They are going to die quickly. Uh but if you are kind of trained on Call of Cthulhu a little bit, maybe it's gonna you're gonna vibe with it a lot more. So uh, we 
case the role playing note here. Um, <laughs> role playing is the act of performing and moving a character. Uh, he's acting performing and moving and moving and moving around as the as the character as the character as if they were as if they were an act as if they were an actor as if they were an. Uh, Let's see, as the character. There are many different ways to role play. Some example of role play listed below. Let's enjoy role playing the way that suits you best. Uh, yeah, acting under a lying. Duh, that's ridiculous. Uh, bah, uh, my resonator is in vain and scared to go on. Compound, yeah, I'd appreciate if someone could stop him. Yeah, it's pretty much like ghost stories and things like that. Very, very Japanese. Uh, play together, discuss the way they would like to perform, role play, see how it's done. Uh, let's perform some. Uh, there we go. Judgments. Judgment. Judgments. Oh, uh, resonates. Oh, this goes to failure. Resonate is action by rolling the dice. Uh, <laughs> three. Yeah, I am not going to translate a three minute and 50 second video about how to explain dice checks. No, they do actually like open up with be like, hey, everybody, uh, here's a video of like teaching you how to play the game properly. Uh, use your skills to make uh, use your skills to make judgments. Well, a number of D10 equal to the skills level. Uh, there we go. Yep, yeah, skills level you are using. And probably do something like this and then we post this because yeah this is like a weird d10 dice pool roll under system uh it <laughs> scooby-doo and lost city of riley so a four like Zoink Scoo, that's some big tanuki. <laughs> yeah, like, you get the idea, man. You're getting it. He's vibing. It's Scooby Doo in Japan. Like, <laughs> uh, it does like to take itself a little seriously, but um, generally speaking, it is Scooby Doo by virtue of Japan. Uh, and if you, the more you, the more you vibe with that, the more you are resonating. You see, see, I can do it too. I can do it too, game. I can put the word resonating everywhere I want to. No. Uh, then you're going to uh, have a better have a better time of them. Uh, I don't like this is one of those weird things where it's very Japanese in the way it wants to do things. Um the, um Ah, uh, the number of dice face entered on the... Do, 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 do. What we're gonna do is we're going to do what we like to refer to as very casually a... Uh, for, for, exa for exam... For example... For example, one d for example, one d ten, one d ten is is one ten side is one is one d is one ten side one ten sided die one ten sided die two d six is two six sided two six sided die three d three d four is three Four side four sided die. There you go. We just need to we need to re re emphasize it for everybody. See, we can be like jet we can be like the Japanese too, everybody, where we just reiterate the same thing nine times. Because <laughs> yes, there is a they do actually add dice notation. Like, yep, yeah, let's learn how to read dice, everybody. Which uh I I Nuni actually pointed this out, being like it is good to be like, hey, if we we legitimately do not know if you're new, you're new, new to this. 
Uh, let's do judgment value. Each color has a judgment value. Well, d10 with less than or equal than to the than the judgment judgment value. Go uh, and call this success. Like, why here? Like, <laughs> explain stuff in the strangest places possible. See, this one doesn't help that, like, you gotta remember, this is also a, like, a website. Like, the, the, I was just, like, raw translating going straight down the website. And this is where you learn about, like, dice notation. They want you to watch this video. Like, here's the video. There's an interesting note here, everybody, by the way. There's a four minute video about dice notation. No, there's a four minute video. There's a four minute video on how to roll the dice properly. Uh, this is him, like, literally, like, teaching you how to roll the dice properly and what they actually mean. Uh, interesting note, that's actually Kisaragi Station. Which, if you look at, like, anything emo chlor related let's go, uh, I need my emo chlor my beloved, I need you, I need you again. If you go here, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is also Kisaragi, Kisaragi Station. It's the same thing, you kind of see the background there. Uh... Yeah, like, it, it, that says how the Japanese like to do things. They like to explain. Uh, I had a thought the other day. Japanese TCGs like, uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh! prefer not to use keywords, while MTG, the other thing Yu-Gi-Oh! is based on, use them heavily. Do you think that and the JTRPG are explaining are related? I remember in the JTRPG server, there was a, a conversation, actually, about, like, why, why do they do that? And you may notice occasionally in my server, people will um, put in the, the, the dank Mimarino of the Japanese table placement. The Japanese love being told what is the correct way of doing something. They do not, it's not necessarily like a bad thing or a good thing, but they like to have, have like a, okay, we're going to sit down in this precise way. We're going to do this this way. And they like explanation. They like seeing things played out repeatedly. When you have like, the absence of keywords, usually the idea is they want these things to be spelled out for them. Like, this is exactly what's going to occur here. If you play fucking Man-Eating Bug, you damn well know what's going to happen with Man-Eating Bug. Even though, in like, easier way would probably be, like, probably some basic notation to be like, oh, you know, on tap do this, like, on reveal do this. They don't want that. Well, that's the funny thing. Like, if you like, that's one of the amusing things in in uh, in uh, Japan because D and D in Japan is apparently very different. Like, it's insanely different because they had they localized it effectively for the Japanese audience. And there was one. I wonder if I can find the. There was actually a big thing going around. Someone was very happy. It was a Japanese uh, D and they were they were very happy the other day uh, because somebody put out a. Because somebody effectively somebody put out a. A big thing that was effectively a, a a new way to play and things. It was like, hey, we understand that you really like playing this, so uh, we've made it easier. We you know we've added in a bunch of new things. And it's it's a very different way of looking at things. It's also it's very fascinating. You kind of even see kind of like this. But they also had to adapt that to things like Shadowrun, for example. Like um uh, there, there's a reason we have this is Shadowrun Japan. 
Like they adapted it for Japan because they have such a weird, different look. Adventures of Sword World 2. Point are very scripted. Yes, they have a very scripted way of looking at things, but that is also you always have to remember where it came from. Like the the vast majority of the Japanese TTRPG scene emerged from things like you like it's the you know, things like Sword World and not Sword World but D&D with this really focused kind of way but you got to remember people's it, a lot of people's first introduction to D&D in Japan wasn't opening up the fucking second edition book it was reading Record of the Lotus War and a lot of people got into BattleTech and it has a very structured way of doing things in BattleTech because effectively what it was was like, here's your designated role, little role play session with three outcomes. Here's the mission that we play. Role play section. This. Very structured. You also had things like Call of Cthulhu, which the old Call of Cthulhu books that were translated into J Japanese were very good. But if you've ever read some of those old Call of Cthulhu, you know, adventure paths, they're actually very structured in some of them. So if your kind of initial... If the birth of your industry is based entirely around the concept of very structured gameplay, of very you know, focused ways of playing the game, with a more emphasis on uh, high concepts, you could say, then yeah, things are going to be things are going to change pretty dramatically. Kind of see, uh, kind of see here in uh, that around Hong Kong. That's an orc, by the way. the The girl in front there is an orc. It would be like um here's a here's a here's a thought experiment for everybody. We went over actually on this very channel and it's uploaded on my uh, on the on the YouTube which you should totally subscribe to if you haven't already wink wink wink. Uh we went over a game called Dallas, the television role playing game. Dallas was the very probably the first storytelling game. It had very dedicated oh I mean uh Yeah, let's go dungeon. Player's Handbook Two. There we go. Yeah, this is the uh, D and D thing right here. Um, what if? Here, here's the thinking. Here's the thing. Dallas Thor Television role playing game had very structured gameplay. You were playing episodes of Dallas. You didn't actually make your own characters in Dallas the Television role playing game. You played characters from the show. You didn't do all these things that we traditionally associate with that. Let's, here's, here's a thought experiment. What if 1978, when this game fucking comes out, it blows up. It's the biggest game in the U.S. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves Dallas. Everybody loves the television role-playing game. But it's not gamers who got into it. Not those smelly war gamers who got into it. It was families. It was people who liked the show. It was people like that. Then other people started making games like Dallas to capitalize on the success. Fast forward, let's say it wasn't D&D that defined our, our hobby, it was Dallas. What would our hobby look like? I can guarantee you that if, if following the same exact things, we would, you know, things like D&D would be regarded as a quaint experiment at the beginning of it all. Like, it would be like, man. See, that would be the funny thing. I do not believe Powered by the Apocalypse would exist. I don't believe it at all. I think games would be a lot more rules light. I think games would be a lot more focused around kind of the, the storytelling aspect. I also think we'd see a lot more franchise games. I think every franchise, any, any franchise worth its salt would need to get its own game out there. But the idea of making your own character may be a little foreign to some people. Every single book you, you know, you buy a book and I would not talk about initially of this is how you make a character. I'd be like, here are the characters that are available. And I'd be like, it's a little bit quaint that you have to make your own. It would be odd. And we are, we would be ranting incoherently. There would be some people being like, you know what? I do hate those D&D-like games. 
They got no structure to them. They've got, they're, they're it's wishy-washy. All it is is talking about feelings and shit. I, for one, uh, I, for one, in this alternate, you know, notepad in another timeline, I, for one, think that, you know, this game would be a lot better if they added in something like predetermined characters to go with. And I would be singing the praises of the Lord of the Rings tabletop adventure game where I, you take the role of Aragorn and the Fellowship as you do Aragorn and Fellowship shit. No pad from another world invents PBTA. Because you, you gotta think about it like this. This is the interesting thing with um, PBTA. I believe PBTA and a lot of the Forge came from a visceral reaction against the dominance of the war game esque systems of the era. 3.5 was, you know, very prominent during that time. You ended up with things like second edition. War gaming was, you know, the war game role play game. The way you, we think about role playing games now, you have a grid, you're moving along the grid, you're trying to plan out moves, you got your fancy va va and magic. It was a revolt against that. It was the spit in the face of, you know, of that being like, no, we want to tell a story. Ironically enough, I think the OSR movement would replace the PBTA movement in this alternate world, effectively. You know, the OSR guys would be seen as the weird basement-dwelling weirdos who everybody laughs at. They would be the hipsters, effectively, of, you know, and the grogs would be making PBTA games, effectively. But that is just how the development occurred. In Japan, they had the development of structured games, structured outcomes, structured way of doing things. Here, we went down the wargaming aspect. We wanted grids. We liked, we liked grids. We liked movement. We liked being able to plan our spells ahead. We liked adventuring with characters we created. Thus, you know, Japanese games seem a little bit odd to us because it was just a completely different evolutionary track. It was a completely different evolution of what we would consider to be a, a, a real game effect. And it's an interesting thought experiment of what are some of these older games that didn't make it. Unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, didn't make it, but if, what if they did? What if West End Games was the company? You know, TSR gets beat the fuck out by fucking West End Games and Ghostbusters, the RPG, is a household name. And everybody loves loves that. Everybody uses the Open D6 system. That's the system that dominates. D20, we don't need it. TSR goes under, gets bought out by a dozen different people, gets owned by a shoe company at one point. But that didn't happen. West End Games got passed around like a cum rag, effectively, and... We have our, our, our current situation. But it's interesting to think about uh, business evolution, of what a sphere or what an idea looks like over time, and how things change and how some things may stay the same. Always interesting to think about. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, right there. Oh, this is my back. Ooh, three, two. Ah, good times. All right, let's uh get back to it. Success of dice and the number is yeah, called the success rule. Thirty-one zero size should be your tenth of payout. Uh, for the results. Uh, in case of skill decision value of three, the rolls one to three, it is a success. Uh, let's see, it's called a, it is called a success. Well, uh, equal to, uh, roll is equal to less than the judgment value. It is called, it is, uh, it's called a success in case is a success. 
The number of success, uh, success, the number of successes. <laughs> Not success die, just successes. The final judgment, uh, the final judgment, uh, the final judgment result is, is determined by the number of successes. So if we take that, we do, we put that here. We, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that, get an idea of what this works. So, number of successes one, judgment value of three. So, we do. Do the critical die, and then we do the error die. Row. Let's do, we delete this column. We then put, we put you like, and we do it like, ooh, no, a little bit too extreme. Yeah. So error, now each error, uh, each result is negative one successes. So we do this. We then assign you like this, 0%, not move the text, fix position on page. We're gonna put the critical die right here. We select the error die. We hit you hit you with zero margin put you right there there we are that should work I wonder if can we get it'll give us a little bit more there we are we got plenty of room now down a little bit like that do something like that I don't I just do this cuz I am a smart cookie there we go here we are everything looks Gucci There we are. Judgment results. So my goal is we're gonna get, we can, we can probably wrap things up pretty quickly here. We've made pretty good. We honest to God, we've made a pretty good amount of, of work here yet. <laughs> Let's see, a uh, negative number of successes. Negative number of successes. It's pretty much if you roll more ones than failure, normal success, action, effective, extreme. Generally speaking, you're going to need to get it. Extreme is the best you can physically get. Doubles are going to be pretty... Doubles and singles are the thing you're kind of aiming for, though. Uh, resonator's action. DL describes the result of the resonator's action. Basically, the number of successes is positive. The resonator's action is a success. Uh, we don't need to add in the dice bot format because we're not dealing with dice bot stuff. We already went through all of you. Where are we speaking roughly? I guess we're. I guess we're in the dealer section. 
So if we put you here, we scroll all the way back up. Okay, so we bring it out here. We're at page 27. And we are through character creation. We just need to do the dealer section next time. So if we put you right here. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty all right. Generally speaking, we're doing pretty good. Things that might need some changing. Looks like there's a note I had left for myself here. Yeah, become broken. Yeah, that's one of those. The world must know the book on screen has rules. <laughs> uh, yeah, technically the um, the Japanese book we went we uh, I, I showed. Here, let me uh, let me uh, bring it back up here real fast. Uh, page. Yeah, uh, technically uh, this 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 particular book. Uh, it does have rules for uh, building uh, golems and mechs and fighting them. And because, again, it's the Japanese. And, of course, they're going to try to throw mechs in at some point. Because that's just how it do. Uh, yeah, no. Images in Google Docs. There's a, f a few secrets to learn about them. One is I uh, never use uh, move with text. Moving with text is a crapshoot. Never use it. Uh, really, it's a it's always fixed position on a page, because uh, the thing is, if you fix position on a page, you kind of see here you see move the text or fixed position on a page. This allows you to move it a lot easier. Uh, do not hesitate to use, as you can kind of see, use tables. There's a reason I use tables for fucking everything, because it is a godsend. That's really the best way to think about it, just because they allow you to move text and move images a lot more efficiently. Uh, it gets a little bit wiggity wonky if you try to mix mix and match, but yeah, objectively the better version. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm gonna call it there. Have you ever considered doing something stupid and reverse dewonging a book from English to a language you don't speak? Um, I've tried that before. Uh, the thing is, here, this is the beautiful thing, is I can understand when I... Because, like, when I see this, I can be like, okay, it's like, okay, a critical die, a die roll of one is a critical, okay. Like, I understand that, and I'm then, like, as an English speaker, I can be like, oh, it's called a critical. It's a die roll of one is a critical. Cool. That, that's something I, I understand. Uh, and it's easier for me to spot little errors or say, like, hey, wait a second, that doesn't sound right. And then I can go back and double check and recheck and triple check, and I can do things to kind of, like, make sure. Dewa like, pretty much reverse Dewangy into another language has the unfortunate implication that I don't know what I'm typing. Uh, unless I do, like, multiple checks. And even then, it's like, I don't quite know if this is coming out correctly. That's why anytime I, like, type something in Japanese to uh, people on, like, Twitter or something, I will put apologies for the bad Japanese. Every single time, I will put apologies for the bad Japanese. Like, <laughs> uh, apparently, I do know... Um, Manly was actually uh, working on translating, uh, working on translating one of my games, and I do know somebody else has been trying to do a Brazilian translation of um, Guadalajara. I don't know how that's been going. Hopefully, it's been going good because Guadalajara had. Well, that was a fun. That was a fun game to write, and it's been the basis for a couple other games going forward. Uh, possibly even this next one, depending on how things go in that regard. But, um, yeah, it's been going pretty smoothly. Let's see, um, we're pretty set going forward right now. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, most likely if we continue the compilation at the current speed, it'll be done next week. That, that's my goal. Uh, if I'm free this Sunday... If I'm not completely fucking tired from this from this Sunday, I will 
uh, possibly stream the ending of the compilation. Compilation doesn't take, never, compilation never takes long. That's the thing with compilation. It doesn't take long. It's just double checking. There's a lot of like, we got to make sure this sounds right. We got to make sure this looks right. We got to make sure the, the fucking thing looks correct over here to make sure everything kind of snaps together nicely. That's really all it boils down to. Uh, for tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to have the Briar and Bramble little opinion go up. Uh, fun fact, it's not about Briar and Bramble at the end of the day. Um, we're going to have the, we're going to have the stream, we're going to have a, the next, the next, um, the, uh, the next, the, uh, Theomashi, Theomashi thing, we're going to have that up tomorrow as well. Uh, what am I doing tonight? Tonight I'm going over two games, actually, I'm going to be going, uh, I'm going to be, uh, reading through them, getting the basic idea of two games. Uh, I meant to do one last night, but it just, time got away from me. Oh, Good news, everybody. Okay, we got our we got our notes. We're we're doing it. All right, good job, everybody. He says he likes everything. Uh, there is a thread, actually, uh, Noonie. There is actually a thread. Uh, someone stole it from under me, again. Uh, <laughs> again, I say. As it's like, it, it, it's like it, oh, it's my thread? Something fell, and I don't know what it was. Slightly worried. Uh, yes, there was actually a thread, as you kind of see here. Uh, it was a shitpost thread. He... He did it at like 10 o'clock at night. Like if you, if you look here, he did it legitimately at like right at the, like right at the end of the night. Like I, so help me God, I will post a fucking thread like a day before being like, you fuckers keep trying to snipe it from me, you bastards. This is like the second, it's the first anywhere in the world. Yeah, just like, yeah, sorry gamers. Uh, the thing is with this one is that, uh, this actually hit page 10 two times. I uh, it was it, it's been consistently um it's been it, this one's I think somebody was just like yeah, I kind of see a Veil Riders. Oh yeah, Veil Riders. I actually got a note about this one. Uh we'll go over this one on uh Saturday actually. We'll we'll talk about Veil Riders. This one's actually fairly fascinating. Uh But yeah, no, PDF is Pretty will be like people throw up, <laughs> it'll be like Black Friday. People post the thread a week in advance. Hey man, if it if it's working, it's working. Uh, it's it, it's been keeping a good beat with itself. It hasn't been like we've got forty two posters. People are doing a decent job of actually talking to one another. Like that was. Here's the thing. This is this is going to be kind of a a, a thing that I want to. That has been the hardest part of any of these threads is getting people to speak to one another. And luckily, it's been doing pretty well. There are some people who kind of get forgotten as usual. Uh, so, sometimes people just don't... People want to engage more in a fight than, or like yell about mechanics. Uh, this one didn't start off great. Uh, this was legitimately like... It, it was a scub. It was a scub thread, effectively. He was like, I'm mad about things. It's been doing... Honestly, yeah, it's been hitting page 10 twice, and it's doing well. Like, it's... For what the... Mind you, this is the OP. There's nothing here. Considering that this is the fucking OP. Like, I'm like, brother in Christ. See, that's why... I, again, like, uh... What I like to do is I like to put the heading image. I like to make it bright, and so people immediately click on it. I usually add in a lot of details to be like, here's what this is, here's all the kind of the explanation. More, if anything, to um, attri attrib attribute uh, consistency. Consistency builds threads. Uh, and this is good, though, but here's the thing. Good idea. I think this guy jumped the gun, and I think he was just mad. He was just like, oh, well, it's the first where I am. I'm assuming that he's from, he's a European. 
and it was uh it was the first for him and he just didn't think about it because i don't think people quite understand i'm fucking american uh and they're like no pal why haven't you posted the thread yet i'm like i haven't posted the thread because it's it, it's not time yet it's not the first uh it is always the Europeans. Yeah, I'm. I'm assuming that. Uh, again, it sounds like this guy was just kind of getting a little, getting a little pissed. He was, you know, you get to see. Does this board actually get shit done anymore? What system spite motivated your current project and shit like that? It, it happens. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> yeah, I know it's um. People are clearly, you know, it, people are engaging with it at this point, and that's really all you can hope for. A lot of walls of text, though. Uh, I'll probably res be responding to stuff later tonight. Uh, we're going to be doing romantic era paint, romantic era painters this time. That's that's really that's really all I can ask for. But yeah, people have been posting, and that's all you can really ask for. It. Uh, <laughs> that's really all you can ask for in, in something like this. Uh, so, I'm going to call it there. Godspeed. Good luck. Hopefully, uh, everyone's had a fun time tonight. Uh, stream tomorrow, obviously. We will we will, we will, will hammer out the details of uh, Theomashi. And then we will... Uh, obviously, this Saturday, we're going to be doing the, uh, the uh, Curious Case of Squares. Um, it's just going to be the square game. That's that's what we're gonna be doing. It's time for squares. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I that I had nothing planned for this weekend. It was just another chaos. Drama. I was just going through. I mean, like I have all these square books, and so it became the square case. Good job, everybody. You you, we've really become squares. No triangles allowed. You don't try don't you dare try force in my in, in my chat <laughs> all right godspeed good luck you know all the rest <gasps>